Well, hi there, boys and girls. Today we're going to take a look at a little bit of a review over inverse trig functions, and we're going to figure out how to find derivatives of your inverse trig functions. A little uh, review from pre-calculus. When you were doing arc cosine, uh, you had to draw your triangle in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2 because we had a restricted range from 0 to pi for arc cosine. And for arc sine and for arc tangent, we had a restricted range from negative pi over 2 up to pi over 2. So let's see if you remember some of this. To figure out the arc sine of negative 1 half, we are asking what angle has a sine of negative 1 half. And so we have to come up here and find our angle. So we're going to use the correct range here. And arc sine goes from negative 90 to positive 90, or negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2. Now since this is negative, I'm going to use the fourth quadrant here, and I'm going to draw a little triangle. And here is my angle I'm trying to figure out. Now since it says that it has a sine of negative one half, I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the opposite side will be right there, negative one. The hypotenuse is two. And of course if you do the Pythagorean theorem, that's square root of three. And so this creates a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Across from the one is our 30 degree angle, or our pi over six angle. And si since we rotated clockwise, that's gonna be a negative angle. So our answer to this is negative pi over six. And it's cool that that's our answer because that's somewhere between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. Now some of you might remember that sine is also negative in quadrant three, but arc sine does not have a range over there. So we cannot draw it over there in quadrant three. Now for arc cosine, I'm going to use this top picture because its range is from 0 to pi. And since it's negative, I'm going to draw my triangle over here. That's a weird hypotenuse. Looks like a shoe almost. Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm going to draw my triangle in quadrant 2. And cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. I hate rationalized denominators, but whatever, this used to be negative 1 over the square root of 2 till someone came along and said, oh, let's rationalize this because it's better. Why is it better? I don't know. I was told by my geometry teacher it's better. That's not even better than that. But whatever. Those are equivalent expressions. It's hard to see here that this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. But if you do the Pythagorean theorem, you're going to get this other side is square root of 2. And so you see that it's an isosceles triangle, so it's a 45, 45, 90. It's much easier, in my opinion, if we would have left this unrationalized, if we'd have had it like this, negative 1 over the square root of 2, then it's easier to see the 45, 45, 90 relationship. But I don't get to make all the rules, so whatever. Anyway, so this angle is 45 degrees, which means that this rotation was 135 degrees. We're going to use radians, though, 3 pi over 4. Now, if you can't draw the triangle, it's not a special triangle, like a 30, 60, 90, or a 45, 45, 90, you can just use your calculator. So what you're going to do on your calculator is you're going to go to arc tan. This does not mean tangent, uh, the reciprocal of tangent. This means arc tan. You're going to find the angle and type in negative 0.3 and hit enter. And whatever that says on your calculator, I'm sure is correct. So that's just a little review about what the inverse trig functions did for us. Now we're going to take a look at their slopes or their derivatives. And I'm going to derive the formula for arc sine by using implicit differentiation. Now, if y equals the arc sine of x, this is another thing saying x is the sine of y. We're trying to say the sine of this angle gives me x. So I'm going to rewrite this as x equals the sine of y. And I'm going to ddx both sides. And so we'll get 1 equals cosine y times y prime. I ddx both sides. So that's why we have to, we have to follow that up with the dy dx. And to solve this for y prime, we get y prime equals 1 over cosine y. Now this is not very uh, helpful for me because I need to get my derivative in terms of x. So we're going to find the cosine of y. y is the arc sine of x, so we are trying to find the cosine of the arc sine of x. Now remember, the arc sine of x is an angle, so let's draw that angle. It's positive, so I'm going to put it in quadrant 1. And I can think about this as a fraction x over 1. So this is going to be the arc sine of x over 1. It's going to be an angle. And the sine is opposite over hypotenuse, O over H. So I can draw this, pic this figure. <laughs> and I'm going to use the uh, Pythagorean theorem. I try to combine Pythagorean theorem and 
figure that anyway you probably figured out what happened but anyway Pythagorean theorem and I'm gonna get that this adjacent side is the square root of 1 minus x squared so I can now find the cosine of this angle that I have drawn and the cosine is 1 I'm sorry the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 it's adjacent over hypotenuse so this is equal to adjacent square root of 1 minus x squared over 1 so that's the cosine of the arc sine of x and I'm going to replace that down here and I'll get that y prime is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared that is the derivative of arc sine of x now if we're going to use the chain rule all we have to do is multiply that times the derivative of u or u prime so our answer to the derivative of arc sine of u is going to be u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared so that's a, a formula that we need to know alright so let's do y equals arctan of x in the very similar way I'm going to write this as x equals the tangent of y and then we're going to ddx both sides so 1 equals the secant squared of y times y prime and to solve this for y prime I get y prime equals 1 over secant squared which you could also just call that cosine squared if you wanted to again I'm in the same dilemma I've got a y involved with my derivative and so I'm gonna to have to go draw a picture and I'm gonna draw this angle and what I'm trying to do is I'm going to do the secant of arctan of x I'm trying to find the secant of arctan of x and I'm gonna write that as x over 1 so I'm gonna draw the angle and tangent is opposite over adjacent and so if we do our Pythagorean theorem the hypotenuse is the square root of 1 plus x squared so we're going to find the secant of this angle and then we're going to square it now secant is the reciprocal of cosine so it's going to be hypotenuse over adjacent so the secant is the square root of 1 plus x squared over 1 and if we square that secant squared we're going to take away the square root and we get that y prime is 1 over 1 plus x squared now I know I went through those proofs rather quickly but that's just I just wanted to show you where they came from you're, you're going to get a formula here so if you memorize the formula you should be okay and if we have to use the chain rule our answer is going to be the arctan of u the derivative is u prime over 1 plus u squared there is no square root in the arctan but there is in the arc sine the only other one we haven't talked about is arc cosine and it's simply the negative of your arc sine so all you really have to remember is the arc sine one so it's negative u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared that's your arc cosine formula um, mostly though these are the only two that I usually see on the AP exam and, and sometimes it's even with a calculator but you still need to know how to find these derivatives alright and we wrote these on the previous page so I'm not going to write them again this is my video not yours off we go for an example f of x is arc sine of 2x okay fine I'll rewrite them the arc sine derivative is u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared and for arc tan it's u prime over 1 plus u squared alright so there I rewrote it so our derivative of arc sine of 2x we're just going to use our formula my u is 2x so we're just going to do u prime which is 2 over the square root of 1 minus and 2x when you square it you get 4 x squared it's a rather simple derivative if you know the formula anyway not knowing the formula would be bad alright and if f of x is arctan of 3x we're going to use this formula u prime over 1 plus u squared for arctan of u so my u is 3x so my formula says u prime which would be 3 because 3 is the derivative of 3x over 1 plus u squared if you square 3x you get 9x squared not, it's not really complicated alright let's take a look at a chain rule example if I have cosine of arc sine of 3x my f prime is going to be the derivative of cosine of anything is negative sine of that thing and then times the derivative of the inside now the derivative of arc sine of 3x we've got this u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared that's going to be 3 u prime over the square root of 1 minus 9x squared so there you go that's your formulas and I will see you guys tomorrow